without your sweet kiss my soul has lost my friend now tell me how do i begin again my city's in ruins my city's in ruins so come on rise up come on rise up come on
And there's a blood red circle on the cold dark ground and the rain is falling down the church doors thrown open i can hear the organ song but the congregation's gone my city of ruins my city of ruins Now the sweet veils of mercy drift through the evening trees. Young men on the corner like scattered leaves. And the boarded up windows and the empty streets. While my brother's down on his knees. My city of ruins. My city of ruins. So come on, rise up, 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 come on, rise up. Darling, where we slept And you took my heart before you left Without your sweet kiss My soul has lost my friend Now tell me how do I begin again My city's in ruins My city's in ruins so come on, rise up, 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 come on, rise up. Now with these hands, with these hands, oh, with these hands. Hands, oh, with these 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 hands, now with these hands, oh, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, oh, with these hands, now with these hands. Oh, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, oh, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, now come on, rise up, come on, rise up.
Good morning and welcome to Hillhurst United Church in Kensington and Calgary. We welcome you through this uh, experience, whether you're right here in this city or around the country, around the world, welcome to our community of faith. It's September. Uh, September is like December without the presence. It can be a stressful time. Uh, lots of usual crank up and start may not be as fast and speedy as usual, but there's a sense of new beginning. Uh, and I think there is that sense around this church. You know, we give thanks for those who led worship over the summer, uh, providing their story. Uh, doing sermons and leading worship is not easy, especially when you're looking into a corner at a blinking light. But people did it, and I give thanks for those who engaged either on a Sunday or throughout the week. So thank you for the leadership over this past summer. You know, our uh, I've just come this morning from a, a conversation with the... Uh, uh, Calgary Alliance from the Common Good, uh, a social justice ministry within the city. And we had a conversation with um, Mayor Nen Nahed Nenshi, who will be retiring in October. And I just need you to know that he said that one of the highlights in his time with, with uh, us as mayor for 10 years was being here right at this pulpit. Uh, one time when we had him here on a Sunday morning, as well as at Knox United Church. But I give thanks because in his talk with us about uh, the future, he just reminded us again about how uh, good communities are about themselves and others. How can we contribute to the world in a better place? And so I give thanks for those of you who offered questions uh, that we shared with him in the last hour. This church is about hospitality. We can't provide the kind of hospitality we'd like with food and fellowship right now, but we trust that you have the right beverage, whether you're on the back deck or in your bed or your kitchen table or on a couch to help you feel nurtured as you listen and participate in this worship. Spirituality, things are starting. This coming week, Tuesday night, elderhood. Uh, I'll be leading a, a session with the, that community, the elderhood group within our church. And then later in the month, I'm super excited to have Jane Croshaw, who will be co-leading with me as our spiritual nurture comes up, as we look at the hero's journey. And she will be helping to lead us and guide us, as will I, as we consider heroes. I mean. Do we ever need heroes now in the midst of COVID? What does it look like? How do we be a hero for each other? And how do we contribute to life? So look forward to spiritual nurture starting later in the month. Social justice, wow, are we in the thick of it with uh, elections in the city and uh, federally and the challenges we're seeing uh, in COVID uh, as people are marching in the streets. And, and it's just a deeply challenging time uh, this church would want to encourage you to know that one of the most important spiritual things you can do is a social justice act. That is to mark an X in a ballot. So we hope you're doing your research and you're making good choices as you think about the elections we'll be facing. People have also said to us, what about the Afghanistan situation? And I need you to know that our church is going to respond and it will need your help. I invite you to go to hillhurstunited.life to find a way in which you can support and encourage us in our refugee ministry. So much has happened in our world, whether it's in Haiti, uh, whether it's in Afghanistan or other parts of the world. Uh, it's been a challenging summer and we are seeking to respond as best as we're able as we come into fall. Uh, now we're stepping to our last and final uh, value, which is risk. And so here's a risk. I'll invite Anne Yates Laberge to step out here and share some news with us. Good morning. Still trying to figure out if I've missed John all summer, but uh, <laughs> we are restarting our little cohort group here. Um, it was a long summer and it was a great summer for me and happy to be back. Um, a lot of things have been happening while we've been gone. So many amazing things. The renovation has been uh, going forward and forward and forward. You can go online and look, uh, and look at the renovation updates. The big picture is that we are going forward and we're to the point that we are looking uh, in about three weeks to have our new uh, building permits uh, issued to us. Um, the community cover out outside has taken off. We've got people coming, dropping off, uh, picking up. This is a non-perishable good um, cupboard that helps everybody in the community. And uh, anything that's non-perishable, including uh, hygiene items and things like that, um, it is astounding to see how many people are using this. Uh, there are people with se some severe food issues. Um, we have new cameras that are not, not, not these cameras, we have new cameras installed in the sanctuary um, that are gonna be part of our new, uh, when we come back. And our sound desk has been renovated also. We brought it up 14 inches and we've expanded it. 
And Bob Watts is an amazing craftsman who actually made it look like it was an original heritage piece. And um, Dave Harker, Dave lift Harker it up. lifted the whole thing up. He built the new floor. So there's been so much happening here um, while we were away. So um, the hardest thing we have to talk about is, is our COVID situation and uh, how much I, I explained it this week that I felt like I got a punch in the stomach. You know, we've been gearing up and gearing up and now we're back looking at these cameras and we love Chad, but it's really difficult to do it this way. And we were so much looking forward to the other way, but um, it's, a, you know, we're really in close contact with um, David Keegan, Dr. David Keegan, our medical advisor, and we are doing what is safest for everybody, including our staff who, uh, who are also working really hard and, and miss everybody too. So, so there's your risk update. I love that you include me in the values of the church under risk. Under so, risk, it's uh, a big risk. Here's the deal, Ann and I, the other thing you need to know is this morning we got here early to listen to uh, someone who's uh, has a gift on the organ. And I'll tell you what, was it ever amazing it was so to beautiful. sit on the uh, hard chairs and listen to the organ come alive. And I just really have this image of, I know we'll all be back in this room, uh, bring boxes of Kleenex, because once you hear the instruments and the voices and see faces you've forgotten, it's gonna be uh, a wash. Now, the good in thing, good too, the, the kind of the, the neat thing is that we are actually able to have Lori here today. And funny enough, Greg, the, our, one of our new accompanists, and they, they performed here this morning with us. It's, it, we're trying to change. We're going to make some small changes to how we're doing production to make it feel a little bit more like home. We're just we're hearing people need to feel it's a little different. So we're, we're doing what we can. We are absolutely welcome. We welcome all your feedback, we really do. But we're going to do things to try to make it feel just a little bit more like you're here, even though you're not, but we're going to make some changes. So you're still going to hear from Lori right after this also. All right. Well, glad you're here. Uh, whoever you are, wherever you're at, we trust you're in the right place. May the wings of the spirit lift you this day as we gather. Happy Sunday. Hi there. My name's Lori Fallis, and my husband, Kim, and I have been attending Hillhurst United Church for the last several years. And um, we've recently been um, invited to take on the role of worship music advisors at Hillhurst United Church. And we're so excited about that role. As you know, we've been through 18 months of not being able to be with each other live, but we've been delivering services on Sundays, and that has included worship music. And we're really excited to announce that we've had some changes come along the way in our music team. And I just wanna let you know this morning about the team. So um, as you know, Living Spirit Church has combined with us and we're gonna to worship together. And Amanda Massey has been hired to take on our Congregational Church Choir. We're really excited about Amanda coming on. She's got a wealth of experience in music. She teaches, she sings, and she has an opera background and has lots of years of experience leading choirs. Along with Amanda, her husband, Greg, who's also a very accomplished musician, he's gonna join us to accompany the choir, and he's got some other skills in uh, doing some digital recording, and so we're excited to include Amanda and Greg on our team. Another new development is we have been in contact with a great musician named Jesse Peters, and we're going to embark on a really interesting experiment that will be, I'm sure, amazing for all of us. We're gonna bring Jesse on in the role of music and worship arts Resident. So he's going to join us for a residency where he really works with us in our music and worship arts and incorporates and really builds our music program, helps us to try new things, learn new things, write new music, include new musicians from the congregation, and really bolster our program so that we can include music into our faith journey. Also on our team as a piano player and accompanist is Christy Gunter, and Christy's going to continue on with us. Christy has served us for the past few years um, in the role of accompanist. She's been the choir accompanist. She's accompanied our worship band, and also Christy has accompanied our children's choir. So that's the team that we've put together. We've also got some volunteer musicians that have helped us with our music throughout this COVID season. We're really looking forward to moving forward in music. If you're interested in choir or music, you can reach out to the church and um, get in co contact with me. But I'm excited to let you know that music and worship arts at Hillhurst is alive and well, and we're working hard to incorporate music as part of our faith journey. Thanks. 
Welcome to Hillhurst United Church. I'm Keith Murray, the Affirming Coordinator here, and we're so glad you're here this morning. Hillhurst United Church is an affirming community of faith. And what does that mean? That means we celebrate the sacred worth and value each person as a part of a community, no matter what your gender identity or expression, your sexual orientation, your age, race, ethnic background, economic circumstance, health status, all of you are welcome. All of us are celebrated here and are beloved children of God. We hope you enjoy this morning's service. Welcome to Hillhurst United Church. Good morning, my name is Tony Snow. I am the Indigenous Minister here at Hillhurst United Church and for the Chinookwins region of Southern Alberta for the United Church of Canada. We begin this season of creation with the reminder that care and concern for our health fellow human beings is our calling. When my ancestors agreed to live together with the newcomers, there was charity and goodwill that we might learn to live together. Broken promises made the Nakota Iethkiabi, the Nitsitapi, and the Tutina peoples learn to distrust and taught us that those who took would make us last, even as we gave and gave. But this was our teaching to give and help and share freely. We were God's people, and we lived in the bounty of the world with charity and humanity for all. Our calling to live as God intended for us would still occur in spite of the hardship and the lies and the exclusion. This indicated a faith in the Creator that eventually the world would be righted and the pain would stop. But we can only do that Together, here in Treaty 7 territory, we are one people. For many nations with many beliefs, my people always believed that there was room for all, despite our differences. If we held each other with respect, trust, honesty, humility, wisdom, bravery, and love. Here in Treaty 7 and in Métis Region 3, we must live out our teachings and put one another ahead of ourselves. At this time, as we look into this month of contemplation and challenge, we will address many of these in the events to come. And so we invite you all to join us to be part of this journey. Amen. Prayer is a mystery. Sometimes it is reciting a prayer, words that matter to us. Sometimes prayer is when we call out for help when we're in trouble or in great joy when something great has happened and we say, oh my God. The centering prayer is a chance really to breathe, 
there are no right words. It's about opening our heart and our mind to the Creator. And so on this day, as we gather, I invite you to open your heart and mind just simply to breathe and trust that we are not alone as we pray. Let us pray. Creator, like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings, so too do you gather. You call us, hold us, and heal us. Be in our breathing, our questioning, our wondering, our letting go, that we may trust you will help us to walk, to run, and to soar anew. In silence, we offer our own words. We gather our prayers as we sing together the Lord's Prayer. Isaiah wrote and spoke these words a long time ago, and they're simple words. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May you and I trust that those are the words we need for this day and this moment right now. God will invite us to walk, to run, and to soar. Free, love and invited to the fullest of life. We are loved, forgiven, and set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. One of the great gifts of this community, though, again, once we're in uh, the COVID challenges, open, close, how to do it, where to meet, and the ongoing life of this seven-day-a-week church goes on. We go on in meetings on Zoom, uh, meetings outside, uh, weddings, uh, funerals, and COVID protocol in all cases, but it requires your resources. And the giving that you give to us ongoing helps this ministry through. And there will be a day when we'll gather all of us in this sanctuary. And it's because you're able to give that we're able to continue our ministry. So I invite you to make a gift online or to continue to open your time, talent, and treasure to us as we seek to be your seven day a week church. Thanks be to God. Amen. The first reading today comes from Isaiah 40, verse 31. The Bible has many purposes, teaching, learning, leading, praising, and providing us with wisdom and comfort. Isaiah 40 is a passage that provides us comfort and strength, reminding us to have patience, pause, and pay attention. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our second reading comes from Matthew 6, 
verses 25 to 28 and verse 34. As a chronic worrier, this passage is difficult for me. It's easy for someone to tell you to stop worrying, but in a world that's chaotic, how do you stop worrying? I think we need to let these words of wisdom from Matthew sink in. As Matthew was also living in a time of chaos and turmoil. And this passage is a good reminder that even the insignificance is significant. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food and body, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? And can any of you, by worrying at a single hour, the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. May these ancient words of wisdom speak to you and provide you comfort, knowing we are not alone. We live in God's world. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life you were only waiting for this moment to be free blackbird fly blackbird fly into the light of the dark black Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to arise You were only waiting for this moment to Anne doesn't want me to say this, but I'm going to say it. Good morning and welcome to Hellhurst United Church. Here's the deal. For a minister, uh, there are tough Sundays to preach. It might be Christmas Eve when you have lots of the culture there who show up once a year. It might be Easter when people show up and they're wondering whether or not there's life after death. Or for me, one of the toughest one is getting out of and off the beach and into the pulpit. That's one of the hardest sermons to do. I haven't been in church before this summer. And now I'm standing here sharing a sermon with a blinking red light. This is tough for me. So uh, as you come to this, I recognize that some of you have been showing up faithfully every Sunday to Hillhurst United Church or another, or perhaps you're uh, zoning in for the first time thinking, this is the year we're going to go back to church. Whether you've been here for a long time or a very short time, we welcome you to Hillhurst United Church. Let us pray. 
Spirit, many demands, many challenges, many questions. We breathe into this sermon together, whether it's Sunday morning or Tuesday night at 11 o'clock. Help us to breathe, pay attention, and be a present to the right word for the living of our life. Amen. These days, as I move about, <coughs> uh, inevitably the question comes up to me, how was your summer? To which I quickly reply, you mean, how is my summer? I'm one of those people who is in complete denial that summer is coming to an end. I'm one of those people who is in complete denial that it's going to be fall and February will come upon us. And so I want our summer to stretch as long as it possibly can. And so I usually reply, how is my summer? If they really want to know the answer, I inevitably get around to saying, for me, my summer 2021 was for the birds. They might look at me and wonder, what do you mean for the birds? Well, here's the deal. We were in Ontario for about a month uh, seeing family and friends, but it just didn't quite cut it this year. Due to COVID and all of the extra pressure and restrictions and stuff, seeing my friends who I normally see just didn't happen. Connecting with some of my family just didn't happen the way I had hoped it would be. Ontario was going to be re renamed rain Terrio. It seemed to rain every day in Ontario. We were at our humble family cottage. My mother tells me that it's uh, 65 years old. They bought the land and built the cottage for $2,700. You can't even buy a bike for $2,700. But for 60 of my 61 years, that's where I've gone every summer. And in some sense, it is home. But this year, it felt a bit like the birds. One of the traditions in our cottage, summer cottage, is to watch the news at night. And even that was hard, to turn, off, turn on the news and to hear about Afghanistan and to see our involvement there and people literally clinging to planes as they flew away, to hear about an earthquake in Haiti and as though it was just a quick passing thing, and then to hear about the election called and then people participating in marches outside hospitals, uh, politicians being hurled either an egg on their head or a stone in their back, and the anger and frustration in the world. It made you want to click it off. Don't ruin my holiday, I would say to myself. I never felt more like a skunk at a garden party than being in Albertan and Ontario this past summer. When people heard or knew that I was from Ontario, inevitably there would be some comment or some joke about our province or our premier. And then to hear about the the government coming out, provincial government coming out with a lottery and then $100 gift cards for people who get vaccinated. It was a tough summer. In lots of ways, it was for the birds, though I recognize I'm privileged to have been in Ontario at a cottage. It was still in many ways for the birds. I looked into the origin of that phrase for the birds. It goes pre-car, and, and what it talks about is the, what is emitted from the horses would land on the ground and who would dart in to feed on the feces of the horses were the birds. And so the phrase for the birds was really like saying it's for poop or useless or meaningless for the birds. In some ways, I got to say, and if I'm being honest, my summer was for the birds. But then I realized something. I realized something, it was actually the birds that made my holiday and my time away such a great delight. You see, at our cottage, one of the things that has been lifelong in history, part of our community and our church at our, at our cottage is that after dinner, the, the lake would become calm. And someone would inevitably say, let's go for a paddle. Well, this year I had the great joy of going with my mom, who's 93, and I'm paddling out in the red canoe out to the, to the lake, dead calm. And we would go and search for the loons, which is always the thing to do. And so we would paddle out and there sit on the very still water and look for the loons and paddle very closely, not to interfere, but simply to observe. Well, this year it was exciting because there were loons. Last year there wasn't loons. Something was missing last year that returned this year, the loons. And in the photographs, you'll see there's, 
this incredible time of being on the quiet water and watching them dance and play right around our boat. It was so, they were so excited to be back this year. They performed for us beautifully. One evening, I decided to sleep on a tent on the shore of the lake, and, 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 and I woke up at three in the morning, well, not just because of worry, but I was wakened by the sound of the loons. And for whatever reason, you know me, I'm such a tech geek, I reached for my phone and I pushed record. And I listened to this beautiful song between two loons. Maybe you'll have a chance to hear it in this service. But every night, we had the opportunity to hear the call of the loons one to the other. It's haunting and mysterious and magical, and it is home. There's something about the water. There's something about the call of the bird, the loon, that is majestic. I found out today that they have a 46 inch wingspan. That's big. I found out that they're not very good walkers, so they build their nets, nests close to the shore. I found out that there's usually a pair in one part of the lake, but they mate for life. There's so much about the mystery and wonder of the bird, the loon, that I love that was part of my holiday. And in a sense, that bird and those birds made my holiday. But then I realized that that there was another bird that was so much a part of my holiday. Forever in the generations, my mother has been the one who has a pulley that, that goes across the front of the cottage, and then there's this the red um, water, sugar water, that she's prepared for them. And you'll see in the picture here, Charlotte is there preparing and pulling up the, uh, the water for the hummingbirds. And one night after dinner, when I wasn't paddling, I was just sitting in a chair, and I could hear the hum of the hummingbird. Do you know they, they hum 70 times a second, 4,000 times in a minute, that sound of the hummingbird? And I sat in the chair and I watched and I listened to the humming of the hummingbird. These are the most beautiful and wonderful, tiny, teeny birds that dart in and out, that defend and eat fruit flies and all kinds of things, but they love that red sugar water. You know, in my former life, I think I was a hummingbird. I, I'm a darter. I flit, flit in and out, and I dance and move fairly quickly, believe it or not. But there's an attraction to that bird, and there's something about sitting in that chair for probably half an hour, just waiting and watching for the hummingbird that brought great delight for me in my holiday. Just this past week, golfing at Inglewood Golf Club with my son, I looked out over the Bow River and I saw an eagle circling and then suddenly it darted straight down into the water and right back up with a fish in its claws. There's something about birds this summer. My summer has been for the birds, but it has been enhanced by the birds. Do you have birds that you watch? Have you ever stopped long enough to to watch, to listen. You'll see in the servers photographs of David Gray from our congregation who has seen that as a spiritual practice to take pictures of birds. And I'll invite you to send them to us because there's something of the, the mystery and wonder of watching birds that helps us be present, helps us to stop, helps us to open up to awe and wonder that is the gift of birds. You know, birds are very popular in the Bible. They're mentioned over 300 times in scripture, different ways of talking about the metaphor and symbol of God being present like a bird or, or challenging like an eagle or vicious like a pigeon. Birds are metaphors to speak about our understanding of God. In the passage that Kim read a few moments ago, Jesus uses it as a reminder not to worry. He says, be not anxious. Do you not see that God cares even for the birds of the air? God counts the number of hairs on your head. But the image of God caring and being uh, attentive to even the smallest of birds, the smallest of hummingbirds, is an image of comfort. It's an image of care about who the Creator is. Even though we forget and say life is for the birds, there's no point. Jesus used as the image of the bird to remind us there is care 
there is comfort that comes from the Creator. One of my favorite images of my dad as a kid was watching him do a final blessing. In those days, the minister wore a big black gown and they stood at the front of the church and did a blessing. And I can remember him standing in his Geneva gown, standing at the end of the service saying, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those words of Isaiah about waiting, about the eagle and the, the, the wings of the creator, encouraging and lifting, inviting people to walk and run and fly and soar is a hopefulness of the creator inviting us to know God will be the enthusiasm, the spirit that will lift us when we have fallen down. And many of us feel like we're crawling on our knees right now but the reminder is God will provide, God will lift us to walk, to run, and to soar. And then, of course, the image of Jesus' baptism is so central for Christians that, that Jesus, who was baptized by John, is down by the river, and he's dunked underneath the water. And when Jesus comes out of the water, the heavens open and a dove descends on Jesus. And the words, you are my beloved child with whom I am well pleased, are the words of the Creator at this moment of baptism. Historians will say we see the dove as white and pure, but, but really likely they're saying it was probably more like a pigeon, gray and ordinary, disdained and shoved aside, poops on her head. The pigeon is tenacious. And what if we wonder that the Spirit is not just comfort, but tenacious and fierce? providing that kind of ongoing presence in the streets and the mountains and the valleys of our life. The descent of the pigeon, perhaps. You see, scripture is filled with all these beautiful images of birds as, as power and strength and comfort because we use our words to try to explain what God's like and where God is in the midst of the messiness of the life we live. And these metaphors remind us of God's constant presence, God's constant compassion and care for us, even when we don't feel it our very self. I heard a story about the, another image in the scripture that is so powerful to me. Jesus has a line where he says to the, uh, those around him, oh, I long to be like a mother hen who gathers her chicks under her wings. And apparently the story goes, and the picture I've seen is that, is that the hen gathers in the chicks under her wings. And even when a fire comes to the barn, while the mother may be charred as charcoal, when you lift the wings of the hen underneath are saved, the very chicks that were her children. It's a beautiful image Jesus used that even in the fires, even in the, in the COVID experience, even in the challenges in our political world, God is the one who will always provide the wings and care and compassion that we need in those very moments. I love that reminder and that image. So you see, my summer may have been for the birds for lots of reasons, but it's also for the birds for the birds have brought me hope and reminder and compassion and courage to make one more step, trusting that we are indeed under the wings of God the Creator. In your sanctuary behind my back, you'll see a picture of the winged beings. And every Sunday I look out at those and I imagine that God is the one whose wings shelter and comfort and call us together. And whether we are in our bed right now, our kitchen table, our couch, or listening, just know that God's wings move and she holds and caresses and comfort. And we will make it through this together for the birds. May God be with us as we journey. Amen. Throughout the summer, your church obviously has been here. We have been uh, participating in uh, public events. We had the ringing of the bells in June. 
uh, celebrating Pride this week. You can see the color here. And we're hoping that uh, in September, October, probably October, we're gonna gather you out here for a service. We'll keep uh, posted on uh, protocol from COVID. Uh, these, these walls matter, the pews matter, the organ matters, the people matter. Uh, we miss you and we look forward to us finally gathering. But we trust that uh, as we go, we don't go alone. Isaiah said, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all, go in peace this day. Amen. Touch and bless
There's a blood red circle on the cold dark ground and the rain is falling down. The church doors thrown open, I can hear the organ song, but the congregation's gone. My city of ruins, my city of ruins. Now the sweet veils of mercy drift through the evening trees. Young men on the corner like scattered leaves. And the boarded up windows and the empty streets while my brother's down on his knees. My city of ruins. My city of ruins. So come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. Darling, where we slept And you took my heart before you left Without your sweet kiss My soul has lost my friend Now tell me how do I begin again My city's in ruins My city's in ruins so come on, rise up, 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 come on, rise up. Now with these hands, with these hands, oh, with these hands, hands oh with these 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 hands now with these hands oh with these hands yeah with these hands oh with these hands now with these hands Oh, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, oh, with these hands, yeah, with these hands, now come on, rise up, come on, rise up.
There's a blood red circle on the cold dark ground and the rain is falling down. The church doors thrown open, I can hear the organ song, but the congregation's gone. My city of ruins, my city of ruins. Now the sweet veils of mercy drift through the evening trees. Young men on the corner like scattered leaves. And the boarded up windows and the empty streets while my brother's down on his knees. My city of ruins. My city of ruins. So come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. Come on, rise up. 